All right, thank you again. Uh, listen to Undefeated. This is Michael Montgomery, your host. And we, right now we have Dr. Teron Woodrow, a longtime friend, Texas A&M alumni. Thanks for coming on the show. No problem. Thank you for having me. Man, uh, I, man I'm so honored, man. Uh, first of all, you know, I want to just get into it, right into it. A lot of people want to know the story and, and, and just giving back from mental health a uh, month last week, and I'm all big on self-evaluating, self-analyzation, and understanding how we get better and improve, you know, individually, one by one, and helping us, others reach their, their uh, potential. W looking back from your career and as an educational professional, from the, the steps you started from, from high school, college, the pros, even to the PhD, what's the thing you take from your your career journey that you know uh, allowed you to be where you're you're in the position you are today i think that as i've gotten older and i've had more time to reflect on just the various experiences that i've had in life the one question that i ask myself is did i give my all did i did i make sure that i maximize whatever moment moment i was given because ultimately when you look back you know a month a year, sometimes two, three years, you know, when you're actually experiencing it, you're saying to yourself, man, this, this, this is, I'm, I'm going to be here forever. Mm -hmm. But as you sit back and you, and you look at that experience, you say, man, that went by fast. So <laughs> I always try to make sure that, you know, now that I have maximized whatever opportunity I've given and I make sure that, you know, I'm a big man of faith, whatever, you know, I'm supposed to do, hopefully I'm fulfilling whatever purpose God has for me. So that's, that's the goal. And that's just how I look at things at this point in time. So, Oh man, I hey, appreciate that. Uh, I'm the same way. It's when it comes to, you know, the opportunities are given is, is what you give, what you make out of them, you know, regardless of what situation or what, what type of uh, life is giving you a, a statistics and standards, you know, just going out there, you know, coming in with uh, good faith intentions, you know, regardless of, you know, the mistakes I made, I always had good faith and good intentions. Right. And even if I'm in the wrong, uh, like I apologize and just try to work and make it better. Uh, just want right. to come off and grow, talk about your growing, growing up. How was uh, life for you growing up? Houston, was you always into education? Your, your parents pushing you, pushing you to, you know, about your grades? So, um, I grew up with, with two teenage parents. My, my mom and my dad, they had me when they were 15. So um, having two teenage parents, you know, it, it, had its, it had its benefits. The benefits were that, you know, you know you're not that far from age. But mm -hmm. then at the same time, you have two parents that, I mean, they're young and they're trying to figure it out mm -hmm. the best way they can. So I was lucky to have, you know, a mother that, you know, she, you know, loved me. She made sure that whatever goal that I wanted to accomplish, she supported me. Yeah. And then I had my dad, he was more the enforcer. So he pretty much made sure that, you know, things were enforced and he instilled in me discipline. He instilled in me, you know, you don't quit. You always, you know, finish what you start. So I think the, the combination of the two, you know, helped me to become the person that I am. My dad often tells the story, you know, when I was in you know, elementary up until when I graduated, he would have me to call and report on his answer machine every day whatever assignment it was that I had. So I asked him, I said, why did you have me do that? He said, for some reason, son, I just had an inkling that you were going to be talking in front of people. <laughs> so he laughs and he jokes and he says, see, I'm, you can credit me for the reason for you being able to talk in front of people and talk all the time as an administrator. So we just kind of laugh about that. But, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't perfect. But, you know, in life, sometimes I just feel like, you know, you get certain tools along the way. So they did a good job of making sure that, you know, I, you know, had what I needed and then other experiences in life helped me with it. You know, oh, yeah. fit in the pieces. Hey, hey, that's amazing. That's amazing. I always believe, um, you know, growing up for, for people in their position and where they at today, there's always a, like a, a mental makeup of, of their life that kind of propels them to where they're at now. Like, uh, right. it's, it's great to hear that, you know, your, your father was always felt like he was prepping you, pre prepping you for the position you are in today. So it's, it's really great to hear that. And for all the listeners that, you know, and the parents that are concerned and want to validate their kids early. You know, it's always good to instill into projects, um, uh, certain things that give them ownerships of, of life so they can prepare them in whatever phase in life they, uh, they, they take on, you know, whatever career. So just 
give them with tasks that business tasks that that make them better um right. and and sports you know i i did a little research and uh, about lamar <laughs> high school and and I, you know, y- y'all, you had the opportunity to play with alongside of several amazing, talented athletes from Keith right. Joseph, Texas a and Jerron Sapp, Notre Dame, Luke Cuevos, uh, Coach Tomlin. I mean, it seemed like he was like handing out scholarships like cookies. You know, anybody come to Lamar? Hey, y'all want a football scholarship? Come here. Here you go. At, how, how was how was football growing up at Lamar High School? So, um, and that's it's interesting that you said that. So, you know, most of us, you know, we were all from different areas. So, you know, no one actually lived in the area. But um, we were very fortunate. I remember my sophomore year, we had a loaded class. We had a lot of talent on our, on our, on our, in, our in that grade level. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was, I mean, back then it was fun. You know, we just, we played and we had different players, you know, that, you know, Jerome Sapp, you know, he was a stud. So he and, and another guy named Roger Bapers, he went to that, that other school in Texas, you know, UT. <laughs> but I'm gonna get I'm gonna give him some love today, but we call him Kool-Aid. You know, uh-huh. he Kool-Aid and I, you know, we trained a lot and you know, and, and we had a lot of other team members that we played with, and you know, we just had a we had a, a real strong football program. Keith Joseph, I mean, I think Keith Joseph freshman year in high school, he was about 6'2", 230 pounds <laughs> freshman year. So, um, you know, we had some fun times, you know, in practice and what have you. And, of course, Lucas. Lucas is a good friend of mine. Lucas, you know, we we, we gave him a hard time. But, you know, Lucas came in when it counted and, you know, he was a quarterback. So, you know, to say the least, we had a lot of talent come through Lamar. Lamar has a really strong tradition of, you know, of just players just, you know, having that camaraderie. We actually have a feed that we still talk to this day. So, you know, a lot of good guys came through that, but it was a pleasure playing with those guys. I mean, high school football, there's nothing like high school football in the state of Texas. I mean, it was, it, we had some awesome times. Man, ain't, ain't, ain't nothing like it. I, I um, when I was doing research, you know, it, it, it was at least about two, like three, four pages of guys that went to Lamar and got and got scholarships from from one coaching st- from one head coach and his coaching staff and and it's right. just it shows I call it Lamar University I live right by it and I drive past it and when I see it it looks like a a, a, a university over there so it it was great because uh, the coach he gave a lot of guys a lot of opportunities uh, and scholarships after school so and I, uh, one thing I iterate you know about and we're talking about education you know. The the one thing, you know, kids want to need to take from this, you know, you want to go to the big schools, you want to go to big division one schools, you have to have division one school grades. You know, right. a little bit about me, you know, I, I was uh, I always at a big head and I thought, you know, uh, since I was all American, all state, I thought, you know, and I wa- and that's when the program came out. The football movie and, and, and everybody. Yeah. And every and I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm thinking like, OK. They gonna make a way for me, regardless of what grades I have, regardless of what GPA or SAT. You know, if they want me, they gonna come get me. You know, I'm all American. And my and my mother, she was a uh, education. She was in education. She teached uh, physical ed and uh, and she always taught and coached. And she told me, you know, you need to get those grades up. You have the men. You have you have the abilities. You just need to work work at it. And you know, I had the big head. But long story short, you know. You want to go to big Division One schools? You have to be, have the big Division One grades. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I, I was fortunate enough to where my GPA was high enough to where I didn't have to make that high, but SAT score. So, no, that that was that was a blessing. But but on the flip side, I, and I'll tell you that about that. You know, when we talk about you know my experience at A and M, you know, it, it kind of came back on me. But you know, student athletes need to really you know keep in mind that. You know, even though you have these aspirations of becoming, you know, a professional athlete, you still need an education. Exactly. And, you know, you're a student athlete for a reason. You're a student first and then you're an athlete. So with that being said, you know, there is a a, a certain obligation that's fulfilled as far as a scholarship, as far as, you know, athletically. But you have to fulfill that academic standpoint because there will be a point in time that you will not be playing football. You will not be playing basketball. You will not be running track. You know, there is a point in life where you're going to have to transition 
into a, a, a professional career that just that may not involve you know you actually playing. So that takes some form of education. So. Exactly. And you talked about uh, Lamar when y'all said, "What was y'all biggest rivalry when it comes to Lamar?" When y'all was in Lamar. <laughs> so you know we we had a, a robbery with a robbery with this school called Madison 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 is a Hiram Clark so um I know a lot of the guys from Madison you know they went to Dowling you know so you know I knew them from Dowling Middle School so it was Dick Dowling so I think now it's, it's if I'm not mistaken it's called Lawson they've changed the name but back then it was Dick Dowling so they went to Madison so that was probably one of our biggest rivals because they had a lot of, you know, studs on their team as well. I mean, they had some guys that could really run and could really play. So, you know, during us the the the, the season, we would we would have um we would have Madison. Now as we, we progressed into the playoffs, you know, Katie, we 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 <laughs> always wanted to to play and beat Katie. So, mm -hmm. you know, one year, you know, we beat Katie 31 to 3. That's the year before they won the state. Now the next year they came back and you know, they 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 targeted each one and every one of us who made big plays the year before and they beat us that year. That's the year they won state. Mm -hmm. But we always brag about the year that we beat Katie 31 to three. So, you know, we always looked at Katie and then we always looked at Madison. Madison is probably one of our biggest uh, robberies, you know, year in, year out. That game was packed. Everyone was always there. Mm. Lamar played ball there. And then you went to AM. How how was that experience like playing with Coach Slocum? You know, you know, hope he feel, gets better. And uh another East Texas, I'm from East Texas, Tombs and and playing with Rock. And how was that experience at AM? Well, so and, and I and I kind of I kind of started talking about it at, at, at the beginning when we were talking about grades student athletes. So for me, you know, coming out, like you said, you know, before you said you were you know, you had the big head, you know, what have you. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had the big head when I came out of when I came out of high school. I was about 232. I ran a 4340. So I mean, I was Ooh. fast big, right? So, you know, I got there my freshman year and you know, I'm around these guys who are bigger than me. You know? So <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm looking at I'm looking at Rocky, I'm looking at, you know, different guys, you know, and they were huge, you know. <laughs> and so I'm looking around, I'm like, man, this is this is a different ball game, you know, but to say I was around a lot of talented brothers. I mean, we had a lot of talent. You know, I feel very blessed to even have the opportunity as I look back on it to receive a, a, a full scholarship to a, a university as major as Texas a was. I think when we were being recruited, they had just won the Big 12 championship. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had that we and all of them. I mean, they had a, a just a tradition, you know, of, of just – great you know linebackers and so it was it was it was a blessing for me to to be a part of it but you know like in any other story you have to, to work and I, I mean I'm transparent with, with, with myself and my experience so the first year I was redshirted so uh, academically I didn't fulfill my my obligations so mm -hmm. unfortunately for me I ended up being academically ineligible after that first year so you know that that was kind of Tough thing, but to say, I mean, I turned it around, but it was still, you know, a pleasure to to be, you know, in the presence of, you know, of those great athletes and just to be a part of a good program. So I mean, it, it was it was it was a good experience. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. and, and when you said uh, you turned it around, let's go go through like what was that road like when you when you kind of buckled down and 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 made things happen. Well, I mean. <laughs> It is 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 hard, you know. I redshirted my freshman year, and after my freshman year, I was academically ineligible, so I had to sit out another year. So, at that point, I said to myself, "Well, I must. I have to really take these academics, you know, seriously because, you know, my eligibility has been, you know, has been, you know, hampered by it." So, you know, I just, I mean, I just started to to focus on my my, my books and what have you. And I honestly just think I just had a, a rough first semester. It was just mm -hmm. the shock going into going into a big environment, something different. And like I said, being an All-American, I think the, the, the term that they coined is sometimes life hits you in the face. It hit mm -hmm. me in the face my freshman year. So, you know, that was probably one of the biggest lessons in life that I still look at to this day. You know, that was one of the times where I sit back and I say, well, you know, when I when I was studying, did I actually study as hard as I should? Mm -hmm. Probably didn't. Did I, did I, you know, did I practice as hard as I should? Probably didn't. So, you know, those are things that you, you kind of, you know, reflect on it. It kind of makes you the person that you are today to where you say 
every opportunity I'm given, I'm gonna push through. I'm gonna make sure that I maximize it. So, you know, that that's you know, that's I just took it seriously. Once I, you know, found out that I was gonna be academic and eligible, then I mean, I, I book, had to buckle down because if, if not, I would have lost my eligibility. My family couldn't afford to send me to a four year college, and it would have been so disgraceful for me to have to go home from a you know full scholarship. So, you know, I, I started pushing, and, and and then from that point on, I just you know continued to push. Mm, exactly, and 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 the one thing to piggyback, at, you know, I just wanted to get at because, you know, I went through the same route, and you know, my grades, you know, I, I tell the story, I uh, my grades were so bad. You know, you know how everybody's taking Division One visit, visits out of high school. I was taking junior college visits out of high school. That's how bad my grades were. And I still had hopes of going D1 to a big D1. And I remember I remember my head coach uh, at, at Navarro, uh, Coach uh, Coach Lawrence. He's a Hall of Fame uh, coach. And he, uh, he brought two of us out, two, two guys in the room. It was me and like a, a DB on the visit, a high school guy. And he talked about academics and he said, hey, guy, he pointed at him. He said, hey, you know, if you get your GPA up, GPA up, you know, you have a great shot. You can still qualify division one. And then he looked at me. He said, look, man, there is a better shot of hell freezing over for you get to div division one. What the, what are you doing in high school, man? It's, it's you know, you got to take more ownership. You wouldn't be in this position, but we would love to have you. And, um, uh, you know, like I said, you know, buckled down and took things serious. You know, I was in the teacher's face every day after school. You know, if I didn't understand anything, uh, you know, I had trouble, you know, I had to take analyzing myself and realizing what was my weakness and going for it. You know, I had trouble writing papers. So I would, you know, I would have my head coach. I would have my defensive coordinator. I have my tutor all pre pre my pa my papers before I turned it in and my teacher. So I, I, I just wanted to reiterate and let the people listen in saying, you know, nothing can't replace hard work. You know, even though you're talented, you got everything, but hard work, just going, getting after it, you know, that replaces everything, you know? So I always, always look at when, when it comes to academics, come, come to classrooms or and studying, you know, hard work, just repetition of, of what you need to learn. So uh, I'm, I'm glad you shared that because, you know, that was something that that really fed to me. And um, like like you, you know, I went through a junior college experience and and buckled down and and, and got Division One eligible and uh, went to a and as well. And and so, you know, playing at A&M <clears throat> and then uh what happened after A and M when you when you decide to take that that uh, focus towards education? So I, I think back and 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 I was at a crossroad because you know even though you know I still had aspirations I still wanted to make it professionally you know mm -hmm. you get to a point in your life where it's, you know your body my body just said no it wouldn't let me and so I had to you know come to grasp but you know well maybe. You know, this this dream of, of playing professional football is just not in your cards. And sometimes in life, it's okay. So I thought to myself, okay, what can I do? And I was watching a, um, a documentary, and it talked about the youth. And it talked about how, you know, the future is doomed and how, you know, these kids need mentors and role models. Mm. And then I thought about um, my freshman year. We had a, a gentleman... Um, by the name of Dr. Reeves, but I'm pretty sure you know Dr. Reeves. Oh, Dr. yeah, Reeves. yeah. Oh, great speaker, great speaker. He's an awesome motivational speaker. So he had a group of us, and I think the year that we were recruited to go to a and we had, like, the number five class in the nation. Mm. And he said, in this room, it's a, it's, it's, it's a lot of potential. And he said, the word potential is a seven-letter word for having done a thing, right? Mm. Having done sports. And he said, you all are the drivers of your future. He said, some of you are going to make it professionally. Some of you guys are not, right? He said, but the worst thing that can happen is you come through this nice, prestigious university. You play, and you don't get an education or a degree. Mm. And he gave the um, he gave the, the acronym. He said, so I'm not going to say it, but there are only certain people who work and don't get paid. And mm -hmm. you feel in the document, right? So I said that to say, I reflected on those experiences. So... I thought about some of the gentlemen that I played with, 
and some of the guys, and you, I mean, I'm pretty sure you you were on the same team. You saw it too. Mm -hmm. Had phenomenal athletic ability, right? And then they either played their eligibility out or something happened where they just left the university. Mm -hmm. And they didn't, and then you talk to them four, five, six years down the line, and they don't have anything to show for it. And I said to myself, you know, I was blessed enough to receive an education. I was blessed enough to graduate. So I want to dedicate myself to making sure that I serve as a role model to young, you know, brothers and sisters who, you know, who who may need to see someone that actually may have had, you know, some mm -hmm. difficulties or may have had a challenging, you know, you know, journey, but they were able to make it. So at that point in time, I was talking to one of I called one of my old high school coaches. His name was Coach Law. And he was, believe it or not, he was at Belair, but I knew him from when I was at Lamar. And I said, Coach Law, I'm thinking about, you know, maybe, you know, going into education and maybe coaching. And he said, oh, really? <laughs> so he gave me all the information that I needed so that I could obtain my alternative certification. And so I became certified in special education. And then from that point on, I, I, I worked with kids that were um, emotionally disturbed and um, some certain students who were on the autism spectrum. And I, I, I just developed a love for just, you know, making sure that I helped where I could. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that pretty much, you know, helped my career and, and the trajectory that I'm on at this point in time. So taught for a few years, went back to Prairie Review, obtained my, um, my master's. And then from there, I went back to Texas A&M because I felt within myself I said, well, when I was there as an athlete, did I really give my all? Mm -hmm. And you know, I had a 4.0 when I when I when I went through Prairie View. So I was, you know, lucky enough to to um to be accepted into Texas AM's executive leadership and education program with a superintendent certification. And right. from that point on, I just I just pushed, man. So, you know, that was pretty much, you know, what, what fueled me, just making sure that, you know, one day I could be in a position whereas you know, if I'm leading a, a school system, I can help put systems in place that will help, you know, kids and and just to let others see that, you know, you know, you have an athletic role, but at the same time, you have a, a educator who was an athlete, you know, mm -hmm. and was able to to implement some of those skills into my my craft now to help others. Exactly, and and, and you talked about systems, and I remember uh, going on one interview. I mean, re researching your your interviews, and you talked about creating systems. Like, how did you come up with that develop uh, development of uh, creating systems? <laughs> well, it goes back to football. Mm -hmm. It goes back to, you know, defense, right? So, yeah. you know, defense is nothing but a big system. You know, you practice, you know, it's certain drills you run. And, you know, a, a defensive scheme is a system. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to make sure that the certain players are in certain places to make certain plays. So, you know, transitioning that into, you know, what, what I do is when I was in my behavior classroom, when I started out as a teacher, I had a certain system in my classroom. That system entails the expectations, the rules, the regulations, and the students had to follow. Mm -hmm. So if they understood their expectations and they understood, you know, what I expected from them, and when they were able to exhibit those expectations, they received the reward. And when they were not able to, you know, meet those minimum goals, you know, they received some type of reinforcement that helped them understand, you know, why and how they could actually be successful. So that's, you know, I, and I've been able to take that approach from the classroom to, you know, to buildings. You know, I, I'm currently a, what they call a turnaround principal. I go into low performing schools. I mm -hmm. create systems and structures for for um, for that that will yield high student achievement. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that involves coaching teachers that in, involves coaching staff, parental involvement, just different components. You know, all those things when you when you when you bring them together, mm -hmm. it encompasses the system. Oh. So, yeah, that that that's that's pretty much how, how I implement systems. That's what that's what's up, man. So so in other words, you gonna come with after I post this, they're gonna be calling you, uh, Doctor Teron Turnaround Woodrow. <laughs> so well, well that that that's kind of that's kind of the that's the term that that's coined. You know, I just like I said, I I, I I like the term transformational leader. You know, you go in and you transform. You know, certain environments that may need it. Now, if you go into an environment that doesn't need to be transformed, mm -hmm. like this old saying goes, if it's not broke, you don't fix anything. Yeah. You just you just continue, but. 
in my case, you know, I've I've had to go into several schools that were, you know, were F-rated or um, improvement required and really institute some systems because, you know, the students were not successful. And, mm-hmm. and the goal is for all kids to receive an equitable education. And as a leader, it's my job to make sure that they are given that opportunity. Exactly, man. That's, that's, and that's, that's awesome to hear because, uh, you know, uh, dating back, you know, the one thing uh, what made me want to go to when I went, chose the Navarro Junior College, you know, they had a system, an academic system in place mm-hmm to show that they just, he showed me a piece of paper. He gave a one sheet sheet of paper of what classes I needed to take, what grades I needed to make. You know, I had to pass an exit exam. I had to get over, you know, 80 hours of transferable credits in, in a year and a half. So there was always a system in place for me to be successful. And it took all the pressure off on everybody else and focused right. it clearly on me. And the one thing, you know, I want to reiterate, you know, I loved what what you're saying, you know, you know, creating a system, you know, putting ownership on on the children to to take pride and ownership in what they do in life. Because, uh, you know, I think I think when you give them you give them ownership in, in their self, you know, it gives them more more pride in what they in when they accomplish things. And Absolutely. that's 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 awesome. man. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So so. And then and transformable, and I always want to talk. uh, Okay, and we talked about systems and um, for the parents that are listening, Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the you know a proactive steps Mm -hmm. on the education for their children. You know, what's a way that you know I know you you talked about how kids you know you went into to 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 schools that needed you know transformational leadership and and raising their educational level. What's a way for parents to be proactive and meet you halfway? So what's the way for parents that are listening that that want to help in their ac- educational development of their children to, to help facilitate higher learning uh, feel for their children? So, and, 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 and speaking with parents, and, and in my experience, you, I, I have to make sure that I always give this caveat with parents, you know, Mm -hmm. and with students. In each environment, the parent is sending the best child that they can send. I tell my staff that all the time, that parent is sending their best child, right? That parent is sending their child and they're coming to you because they're a customer Mm -hmm. with their paradigm. That's how they see the world through their experiences. So as a parent, with that being said, you know, you want to make sure just like you may seek um, that place to live in that neighborhood, or you may go, and and I'll even go a little bit deeper when you're hungry, right? Some days you may want to go to Burger King. Some days you might want to go to McDonald's, right? Well, each company is reputable and they have a reputation. And depending on your need, you know, nutrition, you may go to a McDonald's, you may go to a Burger King, or you may want to go to a Subway, depending on whatever you want to eat. And I just do those things that I'm not partial to either one. Mm-hmm. But, you know, <laughs> there's some thought put into, you know, what you want to eat. Because ultimately, whatever you put in your body, you're going to feel the remnants of that, right? So when you talk about education of your child, when you talk about that, that's that's education is important because whatever and however they're educated is going to predicate maybe what type of skills they develop and then ultimately what type of profession when you continuously build because everything is foundational and it builds on it. So as a parent, you want to make sure that you're seeking the best educational institution that is going to cultivate your child and is going to help that your child build whatever skill they have or If you don't know what type of skill that your child has, you want to develop a relationship with the school or that educational institution so that you can partner with them so that you can help cultivate that skill. But it involves you being involved and it involves you um, taking the time to understand that institution and understand what they have to offer. Because you guys are the customer. The parents are the customer. Mm -hmm. So we're here to make sure that we're providing service to that customer, just like when you go to a restaurant, just their service, it's a sub, it's a service industry. We're providing a service and they have the time to pick and choose where they want to go. 
Exactly, exactly. And and for the people, for the parents that are relocating, because, you know, I was a realtor for a while, and one of the number one questions for people when they're re relocating from one area to the, to the other is schools, school choice, edu education, the values for the schools. What are another proactive way where they could, uh, uh, I guess, vet schools, making sure that, you know, their children's education needs are met? Well, so, you know, in this day of accountability, you know, you, you have the rating. So each school is rated. Mm -hmm. Each school district is rated. But at the same time, you know, it's it's very important that you go and you, you know, you go to that school and you ask for a tour. And, you know, I know on my campus where I work, you know, I, I, I give my parents a tour. You know, you give them a tour, you tell them about the institution and and you and you and you basically sell, you know, the product that, you know, you're you hoping that that they can acquire when working with their child. So I think that it's important for the parents to just understand, you know, the school and just understand what it is they have to offer, you know, get to know the leader because I mean, an organization is only as good as their leader, you mm -hmm. know, so make sure that you, you know, you get with that leader and, and you're able to see where and how they maybe can impact, you know, your child. Yeah, that's I think that's important. That's the most important thing because, you know, you might have a, a, a kid who, who may have a certain skill, let's say in the arts, where if you send them to a school, that doesn't cultivate the arts, mm -hmm. then that, you know, then they, 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 there may be a missed opportunity there. So you want to make sure that wherever you're sending your child, they can, those skills that your kid may have can be cultivated or just academically they're challenged and they're pushed so that they can be successful. Exactly. Uh, Cause one thing, you know, I came from a little small town and, you know, high school, junior high, from middle school, all in one area, one place. And, you know, coming to Houston, moving to Houston, you know, you see you have different schools for different people, like music school, right. you know, law school, mm -hmm. for, in high school, mm -hmm. you know, academic, uh, engineering school, you know. So it's it's so many options for your kids. Uh, YouTube interview, and you talked about how you're, you know, you, you suited and booted every day, every day on campus, every day on interviews. And you talked about how your influence on, on children's, lives were were pushed could you share more about that story and how you know your your impression on on your kids made you feel so and and it goes back when i was a kid right i always wanted to have a job where i could wear a suit i didn't know what that job was going to be right but i always i was always intrigued by you know by suits right so my first job was um my first principal job was at um a school is Bastion Elementary. Bastion was in Southeast, um, Southeast Houston. So prior to um, working at Bastion, I was an assistant principal. And I, I always wore ties, you know, as mm -hmm. when I went into administration, I always wore ties. But when I became the principal of Bastion, I, I wore suits. Like each day I wore a suit. Like, I mean, it was like a no-brainer. I would just wear a suit. And um, one day, one of the kids walked up to me and he had on suspenders. And I looked and I said, oh, nice suspenders. And he said, and then the next day, a kid had on a tie. Mm -hmm. And I said, you guys have on a tie. So one of the teachers told me, they said, they are wearing suspenders and ties and things because you wear a suit every day. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, you know, I realized how impactful my presence was and them seeing um, a male or or someone wear suits and ties there because this was an impoverished area. You know, in that area, you know, you didn't really see a lot of, you know, guys in suits and things like that. So, you know, from that point on, I just always say, you know, wherever I go, you know, this is a representation. And it also, I mean, my brand, you know, I want to be able to go into different places and, you know, that's well, he represents a brand that you know, he wears suits and, you know, he's for making sure that he impacts youth and things like that. So, I mean, that's that's been beneficial for me. And I mean, that was really eye-opening to me, you know. And I, and from this point on, I mean, whenever I, I go somewhere, I mean, if, if I'm going to be interacting with, you know, the public or what have you, a crowd, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that I'm representing, you know, what, you know, Dr. Teron Woods is about, you know, mm. that's 
It's just how it has to be. And kids have to see that because they're only good. They're going to emulate what they see. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what I represent is I represent suits, not saying that not wearing a suit is bad, you know, but in my role and, you know, wherever all the schools that I've led, I've always wore suits. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the young men have always wore, started wearing ties and they, they see the importance. And unfortunately, you know, the community, when they see, that you wear a suit and you're about business, then they are in they are, they are um, what's the word? They are they're more in, 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 entailed to, to do the same thing, you know. Exactly. So yeah. Exactly. And, and that's one thing, you know, and you harped on, you know, you mentioned is is the influence of it. You know, it's to see, mm -hmm. you know, in the project an area that uh, you know, to see role models, people that look like them in a professional right. manner and uh, it, your impression makes them makes them want to be better. I always looked at, you know, people in, you know, that dressed and professional and, and, and had a certain level of professionalism when they do mm -hmm. their work and how they talk to people and, you know, the respected of you. So it was great that you, you I, I saw that. And one thing that just stood out that, you know, their, their impressions kids are impression, especially at, right. at, at a younger age when you're dealing with people. Right. So there, uh, that child is going to remember you. He gets right. older and he's going right. to take what you've done and w how you dressed and how you worked. You know, he's going to emulate you. So, so like he goes to a profession, he's going to like, Hey, I'm going to be professional, wear a suit, tie. So, you know, I think that's big, you know, cause you know, I all, you know, I always say, you know, education, are the all the ultimate role models, the ultimate people, not the athletes, not the entertainers, education, the people that's doing God's work, people that's molding minds. I have students now that are that are grown, and so they they either call me or they Facebook me, and they'll say, you know, Mr. Woolrich, you know, when I was in middle school, you know, I didn't understand, but you know, thank you, you know, and it's it's their respect, you know, what I'm mm -hmm. saying, and I mean. You don't think about it when you're doing it because I mean it's just a job. I mean you just feel like you want to make sure that you know these kids are given the best opportunity. But it's you know it, when, when it's refreshing when they when they contact you, you know as an adult and they say, well, you know you always wear those certain certain ties. Now here's the one thing, I was I was in a, I was an assistant principal at Lanier Middle School before I became principal, mm -hmm. and I would unbutton when when kids had you know they made good grades, I would play basketball with them, and that's the only time that I would maybe you know you know, take my tie off and I would play with them, but I would put it right back on. So, you know, they, they, they see that transition, but at the same time, like you said, they see that professionalism and, you know, it's, 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 it's something, you know, that you, they can model themselves off of. I'm not trying to be a role model, but at the same time, I mean, I'm, I was just thrust in this position. So I have to make sure that I'm a good steward of, of my, you know, of my platform and where I am and what I'm doing. So yeah, you're absolutely right. All right. Um, and you, uh, from from your earlier career, from from high schools and into the academic world and education and molding minds, could you describe just how you know education changed your life personally? I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, I, I can honestly say it, it's 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 been a it's been a whirlwind, you know, um, you know, just the 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 things that I've been afforded later in life, you know, because of my education, you know, I, I first and foremost, you know, I, I think my education at Texas A&M, it was beneficial because it gave me certain skills that I needed, you know, in my professional world, along with, you know, playing football, but that whole institution. institution. And then just the different, um, you know, advanced degree preparation programs. I mean, you know, they help to mold and shape me into the person that I am now just professionally and just my career trajectory has you know has benefited immensely from those opportunities my professional network has grown I mean you meet some really you know awesome people when you're you know going through your doctoral studies you know you meet people from different environments and you're able to talk to them and you know they become your colleagues so you know Growing up, you know, my, my mom always pushed education, you know. So I just think it was it was always a foundation. And as I, you know, became an adult and, and in my pursuit to, you know, to 
you know, want to better myself. You know, education has been a vehicle that has helped me to get to where I'm, you know, where I am to this point in my life. So it's been, I mean, it's been awesome. I mean, I, I feel very blessed to have the opportunities and being afforded, you know, to, to, to do what I do and, and where I am now. I mean, I, I'm very blessed and I, I can only, you know, I mean, education is the reason why. It's, it's the sole reason why it, education is important. It's beneficial. It's going to, you're going to do more, for, it's going to do more for you than you could ever do for it exactly. because it, it has limitless potential. Exactly. If, if, if utilized the right way. I know this, this one thing, you know, as an educator, you know, it never, you can never run out of educator, educators, you know, there's always right. in other profession <laughs> is there always, you know, your truck might break down, you, you know, right. any business, business always breaks down. But one thing that never breaks down is, you know, the need for education, you know, need for right. educators, you know, so they're always in high demand. And that's one thing that uh, I, when I was, you know, doing research that I understood that, you know, there's always the in demand of good people, good education, you know, good people that comes in with good faith, good intentions, and helping mold their childrens into to be the be, the best best people they could be. Right. And uh, there's one more question. All right, just uh, uh, thanks again uh, for coming. I uh, one more question is you know the biggest question is big controversy that's going around talking about schools and indoctrinating schools about you know gender and and critical race theory and want to just want to know what your thoughts on it and and what your thoughts about it um it goes back to what, what we were talking about as being educators so our job is to cultivate student mm -hmm. skills to their just them because you know you have a schools start educating kids three all the way up until 18 to 21 before they go to college so mm -hmm. With that being said, um, you know, a lot of these things that are that are in the news now is, is politicized. Mm -hmm. So I'm an educator, so I can't really talk on political things. But what I can say is, is that, you know, history is a, is, a, is, a, is an important component, you know, that's to be taught. Because if, you know, students don't, and the saying says, if you don't know your history, you're bound to repeat it, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why we teach. That's why we learn. That's why we're here is because, you know, for example, you have a history, right? So if no one knows your story, then they may not understand why you think the way you think. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that, you know, with that being said, we, we're just here to make sure the kids learn and that they're their best self. And when it's time for them to go out into the real world, they can be successful. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's how I look at it. Exactly. You know, my job is to make sure I educate kids and, you know, I don't really get into the controversial things. I just make sure that little Johnny, little Susie, they understand the rules, the expectations, they're treated fairly. And when they leave my institution, they know that they can go anywhere in life and be successful because they've been empowered and they can be successful. Exactly. And that's one thing, uh, you know, I listened to a YouTube, uh, YouTube interview and it stood out, you know, regardless of, you know, who you are, where you come from, what your beliefs is, you know, I'm here to educate you. And uh, I think that's, everybody needs to take that approach. And sometimes, you know, with media and politicians and all that, they just kind of overpopulize it. And it's not, it needs to be more focused on the development of the children, you know, and educating right. them. So, you know, I'm all for education, you know, learning what your past and then learning what's, 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 uh, going for forward. So, you know, I'm, I'm all for that, you know, regardless of, you know, what side, you know, what, who you're voting for, it, it really, it doesn't matter. You know, all that matters is the development and the educational needs of your children being met, you know, and I, I reiterated, I listen, uh, I remember I was, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Charles Barkley and he's a guy <laughs> who he says what he says. Right. And, and, Whatever it comes off, he he says it from his heart. He doesn't mean it in in ill will, and people right. take it. Some people take it uh, bad, and some people take it wrong. And how he talked about how, you know, he believes every there's a lot of great people out there, but sometimes right. people are fueling other people to to keep people divided. And one thing I just want to reiterate is, 
you know, you know, we're all trying to get to the same destination, De depending on how people get there, you know, that's on them, but we're all starting, yeah. trying to work to a same common goal, trying to educate our children, make them the best, best that they can be. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that's all we need to do is just try to work on trying to be the best, trying to educate the best way we can and try to make your children be successful and have a plan when they get out of school. Hey, but that's it. That's it. That's it. But that's uh, it. You're right. I want to hold you too much. I, I really appreciate you coming in. Uh, thanks for undefeated. You know, I know, you know, the first one, first of many. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I got to get your address. We got a sponsor. And from Charles Woodson, Intercept. Okay. Charles Woodson. So I'm going to get your address, send you this. Charles Woodson, <laughs> uh, NFL player, former NFL player, Hall of Famer, has a wine right. out. So I'm going to do this, make sure I do this every guest. I'm going to send somebody a guest of uh, awards for coming in. But uh, thanks again, TW, Dr. T. Turn, turn around, transform, transformable, turn around. <laughs> Teron, Dr. Teron. And I, <laughs> but uh, thanks. Transformational to, leader. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Teron, transformational leader, Woodrow. That's, that's, that's what you're called. Woodrow. <laughs> 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 but hey, but hey, thanks again for coming and uh, I appreciate it. And, and we'll, we'll definitely catch up. All right. Thank you. Take care. All right. Thank you.